DIY Audio Guy here and today we've got a special treat. We have an up to stream amp 2.1. Let's get this thing out of the box and see what it's all about. And here it is, the Arlic up to stream 2.1. This is a 2.1 channel Wi-Fi enabled amplifier designed for whole house audio. Let's see what else is inside the box. We've got a small manual, we've got a little screwdriver, and hey, there's also a bag of fasteners. These go on the volume, bass, and treble knobs that are on the front of the amplifier. Let's pull the amp board out of the plastic and let's give it a closer look. And before we get too far along, I wanna give a shout out to Ehrlich for sending this out to me. They sent me an email and said, hey, we think your audience would love this 2.1 Wi-Fi enabled amplifier. And I said, yeah, I think they would love it too. So they sent this out to me free of charge. You can trust me to give it an unbiased review. Make sure you watch to the end. I'm gonna hook up my RTA along with my oscilloscope and we're gonna see what this thing's made of. Before I get started, I'm gonna install some standoffs. These are some parts that I had laying around. They didn't come with the kit. Ehrlich has an entire line of kits and cases and all kind of neat accessories that you're gonna to wanna to check out. I'll give you links to all of their stuff down in the video description. Let's zoom in nice and tight. One of the first things that pops out is this nice big heat sink that sits on top of the main power chips. Speaking of power, everyone always wants to know how much power will it do. Let's pull up the specifications online. Let's give that a look. Yeah, that's interesting. We're going to talk a little more about that later. Make sure you keep watching. The Wi-Fi and Bluetooth communications are sitting on their own separate daughter board. And here's the best part. There's an antenna installed. I've used a lot of little boards like this in the past. And having a big antenna makes a huge difference in the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth reception. Moving from left to right, these three knobs control the volume, the treble, and the bass. And then you've got right beside those knobs some source level indicating LEDs, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, line level, or USB. In this shot, you can see the sensor for an infrared remote, a plug for a 5-volt accessory, and right here is a spot where you can plug in some front panel lights if you wanted to put this into a case. Checking out the back, on the far left you've got the power plug. This thing's rated for 12 to 24 volts DC. Next are the speaker connections, subwoofer, left and then right. And they're labeled very clearly on the board. I've used a lot of small amplifier boards like this and many of them just aren't labeled well at all. The next connectors are for an ethernet cable and for a full size USB-A type connector. And next to that is a micro USB connector. This is the old school connector like you used to find on Android phones. Right beside that is the line level in connector and beside that is a power slash reset button. Let's get this thing wired up and see what it's all about. I really love these speaker connections. These are Phoenix style connections. These screw terminals are located inside of a removable plug. It makes it really easy to make your speaker connections. You can unplug it, make the connections, then plug it back in. That's handy to do when you've got the amp mounted in something. But here I've got plenty of open space. So I'm just going to put the wires in, tighten down that screw, and off we go. The first time you fire up the amp, you want to hold down the power slash reset button and plug in the power supply just like that. The Wi-Fi LED is going to start flashing rapidly and you're going to quietly listen for this really happy sound. Here it is. And then wait for the Wi-Fi LED to start flashing slowly. Right there. At this point, the amplifier has launched a Wi-Fi network. You're going to join that Wi-Fi network by opening the 4Stream app and the app is going to search for the wireless network. Just click on add device. The app will give you some instructions. What you're gonna do is go into your Wi-Fi settings and look for sound system underscore, and then there'll be a string of letters and numbers. In this case, it's sound system BBE9. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna to connect to sound system BBE9, which will be a Wi-Fi network. Speaker, follow the instructions in the app to finish the setup. So now that you're connected to the amplifier's Wi-Fi network, you're going to instruct the amplifier to connect to your home Wi-Fi network. So just choose the main Wi-Fi network you're using in your home or in your neighbor's home, whatever works for you.
Once you're connected, you'll be given the option to name your device. It has a bunch of presets for the various rooms you might put the device in. I'm going to call mine DIY Workshop because this is going to stay out in the workshop. It's going to be my primary workshop speaker. The app has a lot of cool features on it. It gives you the ability to control the device. And if you've got multiple Airlick devices, you can control all of them right here from this page on the app. The app will let you access several different streaming services such as iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and Spotify. Unfortunately, there's no Pandora or Apple Music on the list. From the device list, you can hit the gear icon and that will take you into the settings for the device. You can do things like adjust the EQ. That's going to be just bass and treble. And those bass and treble controls are the same ones that the controls on the front of the device also control. And that is really handy. If you've got multiple devices in your house, you can use this single app to send music to all of them at once. But if you don't have the app, you can still send music to the devices. This thing uses DLNA and universal plug and play. And what that basically means is that any device connected to your network that's got a music file on it, you can grab that music file and you can stream it to your music player. Here I am on my Windows PC, picking out some music to stream out to the garage. And just as important, I can pick up my cell phone, fire up the app, go into the app and find all of the music that is on my Windows PC and stream that to any of the devices that I have on my network. So if I've got multiple versions of these amplifiers hooked up to speakers all over the house, I can roll in here and I can grab some music and have whole house audio in just a few clicks of an app. Let's run some tests on this thing and we are hooked to the device through the Bluetooth connection. So I'm going to be Bluetoothing my primary cell phone to the amplifier. I've got the subwoofer output hooked up and it's hooked up into the DIY RTA. If you want to know how to build your own DIY RTA, make sure you watch to the end and I will show you how. So we're going to grab the telephone. We're going to pull up some correlated pink noise and I'm going to hit the play button. And you can see on the RTA, the subwoofer output, you can see the bass response quite clearly here. And as expected, there's this nice roll off. So none of the high frequencies are getting to the subwoofer. This is what the crossover is for. And I'm thrilled with the performance of the internal crossover on this amplifier board. Now let's check out the output from the right and left channels, the two in the 2.1 system. We're going to unhook from the subwoofer channel and we're going to connect the RTA to one of the other channels, the right or the left. It really doesn't matter. So the RTA is ready to go. Let's turn on the pink noise and let's see what this thing looks like on the spectrum analyzer. And there it is. And once again, you can see clearly the roll off. None of the low frequencies are getting up into the mids and the highs exactly how it should be. While we've got the RTA, why don't we take a look at the tweeter, the treble control, and see what it does to the treble when you adjust it. And now we'll adjust the treble. We're going to raise the treble up and you can see as I adjust the treble up a slight little bump in the upper end of the frequency spectrum. Let's turn that down, see what it looks like all the way down. Okay, that's really nice. It only affects the very high frequencies, the highest of the highs, which is great if you've got a tweeter that's a little bit too bright, or maybe you're sitting off axis from your tweeter and you want to go in and turn it up and brighten it up just a little bit. These are some really fantastic controls, a lot more control than I would have expected out of just two knobs for bass and treble. And now it's time to talk about the elephant in the room, the only downside to this DIY amplifier board and that is its power rating. According to the specs, this thing could pump out 200 watts in the right condition, but it's just not going to do that. And our first clue to understanding why is to take a look at the 24 volt power supply that they shipped me with the unit. It's one of their standard accessories. This is a 24 volt 4.18 amp power supply. So the upper limit is going to be 100 watts. And that's assuming that the amplifier and the power supply are 100% efficient. A more realistic number is something in the 75 to 80% efficient range. So if you ask me, the most power you could really expect out of this device is 75 watts total. 
let's grab an oscilloscope and let's measure the output in the substage. Let's see where it clips and let's get a closer idea of how much power the subwoofer stage of this amplifier can put out. We're going to probe the connections and I'm using the Bluetooth on the phone in order to run a 50 hertz test tone. And what I want you to notice is that at 10.68 volts, we've got a nice clean wave. I apologize for the really poor lighting. And when you go up a notch, you end up into 18 volts and you get a square wave, which means we're clipping. So the maximum voltage we should expect out of the substage is 10.68 volts. Now let's do a little bit of math. We're going to use that along with our resistance to figure out the power. So you just square the voltage, divide that by the resistance, and that gives you the power in watts. So it's more realistic to expect the subwoofer channel to put out 28 watts of clean power. I would say that the ratings they give at 15 volts are probably what you're going to expect to get out of this thing, looking at around 30 watts of power to the substage and about 15 watts per channel coming out of the right and the left. I don't view that as a problem. This thing can easily put out 60 or 70 watts of good solid clean power, which is more than enough power for a bedroom system or a system in the kitchen. And I hope that you can watch this and think, hey, this is an unbiased review. Ehrlich sent this out to the DIY audio guy and the DIY audio guy is telling you the truth. So here's the big question, would I buy one? And the answer to that question is no, I wouldn't buy one. I would buy two or three because these things are at their best when you've got a bunch of them so that you can play music throughout your entire house. Make sure you check out the links down in the description and check out all of their products. If you'd like to learn how to make the DIY Audio Guy RTA, click on this link right here. And here are some links to some videos covering more of these products. I'm the DIY Audio Guy. Hit the subscribe button right here and I'll see you on the next adventure.